Hi, this is Pat Gunn, and this is part of a Let's Play series for Fallout 4. Um, since I've... Since the previous videos, I've decided to do these a little bit differently and focus them much more tightly around a topic. Uh, that is, I'll typically go on, an, uh, on a particular adventure, and I'll let you know what that adventure will be in the title of the video. And the thought there is that things will be a little bit less of a grab bag, and a little bit more of a... Uh, you can easily f like look through the past videos and see what I've, uh, I've been doing and uh, stuff like that. I'll still have a certain amount of miscellany in there, but, uh, but it'll, it'll be a little bit more focused and probably a lot shorter. I, I first want to mention though that I've upgraded my gear. I found some combat armor in past, uh, past adventures and I've still kept the legendary um, uh, leather armor that I'm uh, I'm wearing the Assassin Shadowed Leather chest piece because reducing damage from humans is still a pretty important thing to do. But I found some lightweight uh, combat armor and I've shadowed it and that's what I'll be wearing. I just want to have a little bit more armor to avoid the really ridiculous defeats. Um, I'm uh, also changed to road goggles because I'm trying to keep, just as a general character theme, I want to keep my intelligence up to really bizarrely high levels because that'll help me level faster and uh, help me get skills that I care about sooner. I have not significantly changed my weapons around. And so for uh, today what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to go adventuring with Ada. Are you ready to depart? Time to hit the road. Understood. Please, lead on. And we're gonna leave McCready here. It's a pleasure to serve with you, ma'am. The reasoning behind this is I really enjoy the process of setting up supply lines between my settlements, but I don't typically want to do it until I can uh, set up robot uh, suppliers because I, I feel a little bit guilty sending humans out to do that kind of thing. Uh, but in order to really build the robots that I want, I have to go further down the robot uh, series of quest lines. So I'm going to do that. And uh, so that's the next step. This is a little bit high on the danger level, but I have improved my armor, as I just mentioned. So we're going to head off and give this a go. I think this is the nearest, um, nearest fast travel point. You'll have noticed that I uh, I have upgraded um, Ada. Ooh, looks like the raiders have restocked here. We're not really here to do battle with them, but still kind of tempting just to give them a little bit of a uh, acknowledgement. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna see if I can get a headshot and then run off. My reasoning is basically that uh, right now it's raiders kind of assume that that if they don't see you for a little bit, you're gone. And I want to make sure that it's still reasonable for them to, to believe that. Let's see. wild dog over there somewhere, but we don't really care too much about wild dogs. Ah, there's a good target. Well, it was a good target. Yeah, we can at least give them a little bit of an excitement, that little bit of excitement. This is somewhat irresponsible in the sense that I really probably need to Probably should be being more careful with my ammo. Uh oh. Oh, oh, that's her. Okay. I'd forgotten. I gave her a laser mod that actually means that when she gets close to somebody, she'll fire a super intensely nasty uh, laser at them. Let's see if we can recharge. Charge a little bit further. There we go. 
Oh, somebody. Okay. Well. Interesting. Stim packs. That's always a nice thing. Yeah, but we're not going to stick around long enough to actually make it worth. Um, yeah, that, that's all we're going to do. Now we're going to just head off. This is all about norms, and I think norms are really one of the things that are the most important things to think about in life. In terms, of, it's it's not that one should follow them blindly, but one should see them as tools by which society uh, remains civilized. So if you if you're careful about norms, oh, that is some radioactive sludge. If you're careful about norms and always thinking about how they're shaping your behavior and the behavior of people around you, how they shape taboos, then that'll help you understand how society functions in the longer sense. And how you want to contribute to how it functions in the longer sense. Anyhow. This is one of the many radio towers that you'll find in Fallout. I always like to turn these on. They don't typically do a whole, whole lot for you. Sometimes they have some mildly interesting quest content. I just find it kind of fun to have the option of listening to the radio broadcasts that they enable. You won't actually see me doing that in the video, but... The other nice thing about this area is that it's an area where very frequently you'll find... Very frequently you'll find a radio class here. But yeah, th this particular area here is an area where, in past games, I've rescued many settlers from all sorts of stuff going, going wrong for them. And it's not a bad loot area, as you can see, although you kind of wonder what's going on with a bone saw and then some bones lying around. It's like, were people actually doing stuff? With, uh, with those bones, or is this just an oddity of how things hmm. happen to be? Wait, did I hear somebody? But I heard somebody. Oh, I do hear somebody. There is somebody Let's do this. over here. Who is it? Somebody named Absalom. Well, there's probably a story here, but... And this Absalom person is in... Very, very well. There, there would have been a different. Hey, what can I do for you? Uh, how about you go and see if he had anything worth taking? Absalom. I'll get it done. Because that is some nice, valuable stuff. Over here. Certainly. Telephones are also. I think they have some electronics inside that you generally want. But yep, lots of good lootables. Only food is actually probably not that good of a lootable. Anyhow, we have stuff to do. We're not just here for tourism. So maybe we should swing by the red rocket here, uh, just to mark it on our map, because all of the red rockets, they tend to have a whole lot of good loot, and we might want to come back and grab some of that loot. Eventually, as these go on, I'm prob probably going to have some very small adventures that are not in the videos. Ooh, looks like Mr. Handy just went off running this way. It might indicate that there's a fight going on here. 
Oh, this Mr. Handy is... Are they really just attacking the cow? Looks like they are. Oh, and that's a legendary Mr. Handy. Okay, I provoked combat well before I really wanted to. Ada for a lot of combat here because this did not really do very much. Did you hear about you? Yeah, this is a legendary phone. And a legendary cow defender. Yeah, there's that laser. That is the good stuff. Fudge. I really don't like losing sight of a legendary. Because some of that legendary loot is quite good, but maybe this is it. No. Oh well. Can't win them all. Okay, so we're gonna actually switch Maybe a combat shotgun. That might do enough damage to make me not useless in these fights. Probably okay. with robot gear is that it has a very low ratio of weight to value, which is why I don't carry it, and it it's not particularly effective for its weight either, which is why I don't wear it. Suppose if, if it's the only thing that you have, then it's not a bad choice, but it's not something which I'm keen to uh, keen to spend time on. So, up we go. The reason we're heading up is that that door is actually locked. Is there... No, we have not con collected anything that we can decompose. At least no armor that we can decompose. So, as a settlement, this ranks reasonably well. Uh, the, it is a high point, so they have good visibility of all surrounding terrain. They've built barricades, but they're not complete barricades. But they might not want it to be complete barricades. They would like the ability to rapidly head out and attack anybody who threatens them. And up here they have fantastic visibility. Plus it's in a good location in that they have access to a whole lot of... Uh, to a whole, whole lot of supplies down in the base. So I would rank this actually as an excellent settlement location. It's a pity that you can't build your own settlement here. Although I suppose managing the inside and the outside of it would pose certain logistical difficulties, or at least it'd be hard to code it uh, well and make it feel make it feel like a good settlement. So in we go. We're greeted with a staircase. Some strange cages that look like they might have been used for humans. Maybe. Oh yeah, uh, human skulls, that's a pretty good sign. So we're gonna see if we can get a sight for what kind of place this is. We see more stuff hanging. We 
can't really see anything to shoot at from here. Not that we could what, what really that? shoot through that grate. Here's some people who apparently have heard our approach. And we see a trap. But we can disarm the trap. This is another area where there's a door that they normally keep closed. But because we've seen some traps, we have to be wary the whole way through that there might be more traps. Although generally, I suspect that most of the time... Okay, so down there we see a whole bunch of foes. We're gonna give them a little gift. Two little gifts. And now we wait. We've announced our presence. Maybe we can give them a few more gifts without things getting too awkward. And Ada. Of the rest. Just can't fan. Kill foes and they just roll downwards. You can see somebody is thinking about approaching us. Are you sure you don't leave anything useful behind? The other thing I like about this location is that one of my favorite weapons is here. This looks to be an outpost. Somebody would just sit here, hang out, and watch for intruders. Which is a little bit weird given how much in the way of a military presence they have outside, but somebody somehow wants to get all the way up there. Oh, we can... Oh, one shot. Nice. And let's get some nice weapons. Move on. All clear. Okay, so over there, maybe. Sweet. Now, this is partly why we decided to. Uh, This is partly why we decided to get that perk that would let us shut down robots. Okay, that's not particularly useful to me because I, I'm definitely doing a melee build. Somebody decided to explode. Pretty great loot here. We play our cards right. Provided we can avoid getting blown up. Okay, so there is our friend. Ooh, we have failed to give a good gift to our friend. Here we have what looks like it was a medical day. Now, if we can actually clear enough stuff away, and if we really need to, we can take a quick nap here. I'm sorry, if we can clear enough foes away. I guess the, the problem with this area is that it loops back around itself so many times that actually clearing foes away enough that you can do that is pretty involved. Okay, so is that... No, it's not. Maybe 
these additives. Yeah. I don't really like having the spotlights because they actually are attached to an AI, and if they spot you, then they'll kind of sound an alarm and let everybody know where you are. This is bullshit. Okay, so. Those are getting frustrating. There's a path up there, but we really would like to clear this room. Typewriters are useful. The bowler hat. Show your face! Come on! Oh, there is a threat. Got something. Basically, the, the way to move onwards here is to go up. So they have a pretty nice setup here. They have the... Uh, they've turned this into kind of a cozy place, including levitating wood, which is not something you, you see in most places. It's kind of expensive. Yeah, it looks like the way that raiders um, mark off territory for themselves is they just kind of build a little treehouse. Okay. Lots of locked doors for us to do, lots of ways up. experience for us. And usually the big win, again, is the adhesive, because adhesive, it's the thing that you're always going to be shy of early in the game in Fallout 4, and later on you'll kind of have more of it than you know what to do with. But it's, it's just, it's, oh, this is pretty sweet. Somebody was drinking, and the unrealistic thing about this is that I suspect that bones, they just wouldn't hold together in human uh, position, certainly over great lengths of time. Like, once the connective tissue is gone, that scene would fall apart. Enemy helmets are useful, but mainly for NPCs. They just give you raw, um, raw armor, and normally there's better things that you can do with an equipment slot than that. Lots of radiation in this room, so we're gonna be very careful to use the, the edges. Now this is a plot significant room, but we're going to quickly peek over here. At least partly because I don't remember ever going over here in past playthroughs. Oh, very nice. A complete T60 power armor suit. Given that I don't actually have a power armor suit, and that this comes free with a fusion core, I think that once, once I get this door unlocked, no. I'll figure out where it goes. Oh, this is just a side area to where I already was. Yeah. Companions can push you. I'm going to get into this suit of power armor and use it. Because power armor, it is one of those things where you want to use it sparingly. That power armor will provide adequate protection. But uh, it is darned useful when used in the right circumstances. Let's just be a little more badass and switch to, uh, switch to a better weapon. You get a somewhat better flashlight with your power armor, I think. You get a better weight carry allowance. Warn you of a new scourge who stalks the innocent and destroys my robot. 
much allies. Only seeks to save lives. This scourge cares nothing for the progress we have made, but we will find her and bring her to justice. Now we are going to Meanwhile take a the look. It is I, this, the is, this is a Ooh, bad person. Attack robots before you are fixing the power. I'm gonna run off. Let's see what's over here. Also get our health back up. Looks like, uh, looks like Ada took care of them for us. That's pretty sweet. But somebody, there's some foes over in that direction that have learned where we are. You don't look like one of the Rust Devils. What are you doing here? I'm just a rust devil wearing a clever disguise. Hunting down a, a radar beacon. That's a very specific part to be searching for. And you don't look like the typical part. I calculate enough. I could definitely use the help. I thought you might say now. So this is a robot that was captured by the rust devils who are a, ba so uh, who are a gang that are obsessed. Understand. In with order to uh, find the mechanism, uh, accumulating technology. Kind of like the Brotherhood of Steel, really. You're going to need access. Right. I'm willing to provide set one. You need to get me as far away as you can from these lunatics. And she makes a deal and with you based on you taking her body. out of there and putting her in a new Once robot body. And she'll help you find the mechanism. I'll mechanist. gladly provide you with everything you need. Do we have a deal? A wise decision. Okay, and it looks like like this close out. But uh but Ada uh, took care of it. Probably should get a little bit out of that habit. Now that we're in power armor, we should be able to actually be pretty good at battle. There's up here a workbench. Again, this is a really pretty kick-ass slayer. A lot of duct tape, a missile launcher. Excellent. Most excellent. Scanning. Okay, so it looks like we still have some friends down there. We will get everything that we want here before we head down to join them. Scanners reading zero hostiles. AO is clear. Somebody. Not quite sure how to get over there. This is really quite an elaborate setup. I feel a little bit weird imagining, like, what kind of a group of people would be obsessed enough with the image of all this death stuff. Watch the trip wires. I'd rather keep myself intact today. Whoa, Thank there's you. There's a weird bright light over there. Anyhow, I guess it's possible in this post-apocalyptic world that they found meaning in this stuff as a cult. That is, they actually take it seriously. It's not for show for outsiders, it's for show for insiders. Yep, and this is definitely where they sleep. They get a little bit of separation, which is probably good. I think that you often end up... I think in real life, you either can get over a lot of the body things that we have, like people being gassy, people uh, yes. maybe not bathing as much as, as they should, stuff like that. 
can either kind of get over that stuff, or you can have a little bit more space. And a little bit more space makes everything easier. Okay, low torch, other stuff. This is where they probably build and uh, built and assembled a lot of the robots. Scarbots. Unidentified intruder detected. Beginning search. Okay, yeah, move it. Keep moving, but false alarm. Standing. You really are taking the path of most resistance here, aren't you? Over here. So more duct tape. Always a good thing. We don't really need that beaker. But... Sea captain's cap are pretty nice. Found the target again. Somebody over here. Up there. Complaints to your local. Violence protocols engaged. But I actually don't have too much in the way of super. Much in the way of super useful weapons. I am still early enough in the game that it's. Yeah, I guess normally I find myself over weaponed and under armored later on, which turns the game into a good game of sudden death. Right now I'm in the odd position of actually being over armored and under weaponed. Even at this late period, it's good to have a list of variants. This is somebody's nice little resting place. Very nice. I'm sorry, the really nice thing about those traps is that if you loot them, you get fiber optics, and those are not a particularly easy to get item, really at any point in the game. So it's super, super valuable loot, provided that you are smart about navigating those traps. And up we go. I thought that there was a person hiding up here. Maybe I'm misremembering. I think we're gonna start being a little more discriminating in terms of what loot we're gonna grab. Well, again, duct tape always qualifies. Typewriters have some cap screws and stuff in them, desk fans have screws. Some of these things are super useful for building good defense settlements, and we're going to keep on getting those. Well, microscopes typically have quite a lot of good loot in them. Let's do a save just in case. It would suck to somehow end up being killed quickly and pull all the way back to the beginning. Or I think we crossed beneath there in the past. Based on my limited experience with you, I estimate a 65% chance of making it out of here. Not optimal. An increase in effort could have an impact on the odds. Again, more duct tape and some ammo for energy weapons, which we don't really any of at the moment.
some lanterns you can pick up and some you can't, and the game does not do a great job at just making it clear which is which. Oh, we've actually finally hit the level. Maybe We're I can carry power some of that for you. Let's take a look at what you've got. We have more stuff than uh, than we can handle. The power armor bumped up our carrying capacity up to 310. Which is certainly better, but it's not as good as we would like it to be. Let's keep... Let's see how far... 166. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay. Now over there, we'll see... This is the one that ripped my head off. I demand we rip her head off. It's only fair. trip wires and we are warned that there is another person up ahead who is hostile. This is actually another sweet pad. The, the downside of it is that it is a pad that's in a Someone location there? where somebody would be tempted to uh, Bas we're basically where people would have to pass through your Scanner's home clear. in order to uh, to get to further sections of the lab, which is not great. Makes sense if you have a game and you're trying to funnel people to have a certain experience. It makes less sense. I'll find you. Picking up something. Okay, now no that is fine. Fired a shot directly into that person's fusion core. Causes them to uh, cause the power armor to explode. And that means that they're going to have to get out of it soon if they want to keep moving around at any speed. Greatly reducing how dangerous they are. Oof. So there. Unfortunately, she has the weapon that I, I talked about earlier, which I really would like to have. Fortunately, she's a whole lot less dangerous now because we damaged her power armor and forced her get, to get out of it. So we should just be able to uh, slip in and take her out. But we're also going to grab some of this test No, no, what are you doing? No. Okay. So again, saving a body, crits. I would have killed her myself. Saving oh crits no. to spend them. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Good job, human. Uh, to spend them on critical hits to anybody in Power Armor's uh, fusion core is a really wise move. Yeah, you can see this is a great location. Anybody should be happy to have a home like this in the post-apocalyptic world. And so we got some nice power armor parts. Somehow, normally when you destroy power armor, it actually ends up, uh, ends up destroying it. But maybe because this is a, um, Maybe because this is unique to it's Tesla power armor. They don't really want to let you destroy it, which makes sense. So let's actually see if we can put this power armor back together. Left arm, right arm, torso, and we have to use regular legs. Right leg, left leg. And a fusion core. Okay, so we have working Tesla power. Armor. It is unfortunately marked as stolen, which 
is going to upset some companions when we uh, when we do stuff with it. But, and I don't really know why it's marked as stolen, because you have no way of really potentially even being friendly with that person. Yeah, we're going to leave this empty power armor here and progress on. I think we're mostly done with this area. a handheld nuclear tosser. And no, I'm not British, so that doesn't have a weird additional meaning. Now, I am noticing something a little bit weird here, in that I cannot turn on my flashlight. Now, that, is, that there is a rather... it's a unique weapon, but it's not a particularly useful one. And it, basically, it irradiates you as it uh, warms up to fire. Okay. Now, this is a door that we saw before. Are we above the... Looks like we've gotten our, our carry weight. able to move without encumbrance. Fortunately, once we reach the top, Ada will be uh, teleported by our side, because we're going through a door. We can then dump more of our uh, weight on her. Now, I believe that in, in the lore of the game, presumably one of those doors should open to garages on the side of this mountain. Thank goodness we are out of that hole. Hey. I'd be happy to help if I can. Sure, go ahead and take a look. Now it's possible that the in the in-game lore, there's no way to actually open those side doors. And not being able to do flashlight is kind of annoying. But, uh... But at least originally, in order to get those tanks down and all that, there's no way that it could have gone down that narrow stairway. But for now, we've both ad we've advanced our interests. In that we've gotten a whole lot closer to Ooh, like we have arrived. We're back. to have your settlements attacked by robots quite a lot. Okay. Heads up. Yes. Here you go, Ada. The final radar beacon. I'll need that head back when you're done. Of course. Shouldn't take but a moment. There you go. Still in one piece. I'm not sure why you want the head. Besides, robo brain. Mm -hmm. Now that you have the... F I certainly hope so. That still doesn't... Exp we still need it, Ada. I believe it... Of course. It makes perfect sense that the mechanist would not only... I'm terribly sorry. I, mm -hmm. I'm afraid when it comes to... Don't be ridiculous. If it wasn't for you, we couldn't have gotten this... That's kind of you to say. Ever since I let my... I chose the route we took the day we... Sometimes I wish that Jackson had... Your personality... You're right. All of the good memories. I really think I need... Now I've distracted... I'll finish up my... Cal Hopefully, she'll be... Okay. 
So we need to build just a little body. But first, definitely need to drop off junk. Heads up. Glad to be of service. So we'll take all of our stuff from her. Store all the junk. We've actually gotten some pretty sweet loot here, so I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit more time between, uh, again, this thing is useless. It just, I don't like being irradiated by my, uh, or damaged by my own weapons. The Tesla rifle, I am going to keep it with me from now on. Uh, I have some improvements to do to it, but it is something which I definitely use. The nice thing about it is that the, um, what you shoot out of it will bounce between foes and so it's great if you're if you find yourself surrounded by a bunch of foes since it can kind of generally kill them all in one go or at least it has a good shot at it nothing's perfect but now one thing we're not going to do uh, i i don't tend to wear power armor around all the time so I'm going to find a place to store this, probably right here, and I will take the fusion core out of it. Cannot exit your power armor here. Okay, out we go. Just the dealing with the fusion cores is just a little bit too annoying, and eventually I would run out if I wore it for all my adventures. So we're gonna take that out, drop off all our junk, and uh, in the next video you will see what I've done, uh, or actually just in uh, in general in future videos you'll see what I've done to make uh, our happy, friendly Tesla rifle into something sweet. I don't yet have the skills I, I want to improve it all the way up, but I have uh, skills enough, I think, to do some improvements to it. And I can probably do some stuff for Ada with some of the stuff I looted off of um, those robots there. So, uh, I guess the... Pretty sure that that attack means that we're not going to be visited by anybody from over here. But just in case, I'm gonna take a quick peek. Oh, did we gain a level? No, we didn't. I thought we might have. Take a quick peek over here. Oh, looks like we have. There are some rust devils over there, and I would generally like to try and show you all the combats that I that I'm likely to get involved in, so let's take care of them before we, uh, before we close for the evening. Let's see. Generally, the humans in the Rust, de Drevel, uh, bleh, Rust Devil troops are not what we're interested in, because they just tend to have super heavy armor that we're not Robots actually pretty uh right hand. Robots are another story. They actually are often gonna have parts that we would really like to have. Or at least parts that we would really like to loot. But we may have lost track of them. There was a Protectron Deathle. Another one. Soltron Head. Yeah, a little bit of ammo from these guys. I guess that's not uh, not too bad. But yeah, the, the most interesting stuff is from the robots. And we're going to have to be careful because we're getting a little bit low on loot. I'm sorry, getting a little bit low on ammo. We are back within sight of our settlement. 
So I'm going to uh, leave it here, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.